graces, Jackie Mulligan. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to see and meet both of you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, y yourself uh, and a little bit about the story of uh, Reform Wellness and how it came to be? Are you a cradle Catholic? Are you a convert? Um, what were you doing before Reform? All, all that good stuff. Sure. Thank you. Um, so yes, my name is Jackie Mulligan. Um, I, my title is CEO at Reform, um, but my it might be a little different than what the world recognizes that title as, um, because it stands for Chief Eucharistic Officer, um, oh, and okay. that is because I like that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, my my um, my heart uh, is in the Eucharist, and our goal as a Christ-centered wellness practice is to bring as many hearts and souls to the Eucharist to heal the whole person. And mm -hmm. so um, I founded Reform Wellness, um, our um, wellness ministry, um, about five years ago, though I think it was something slowly forming in my heart for long before that, um, where we merge faith and functional medicine together to look at um, the whole person, knowing that we are uh, body and soul together. That's nice. beautiful. Um, okay. So one of the things that I read, uh, in preparation for, for our conversation, um, it was a concept of functional health and, mm -hmm. and, and then wellness. I think that, I mean, if I'm being honest, um, when you hear the wall, the word wellness in, in the world that we live in, sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you think of some things that are not very Catholic like mm -hmm. yoga and veganism mm -hmm. and chakras and mm -hmm. crystals. And, uh, but, but it seems like reform might be like the, the baptized version of, of wellness <laughs> or, or like the, I, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but it, it, am I wrong in, in assuming that, or can you expand on one, what functional health and wellness mean? Sure. Well, our body is designed to to heal itself, um, and our bodies are temples that we were gifted um, and to utilize our time here well and to, to serve God, um, but also to live fully alive. Um, we learn in John 10.10 10, that he came to give us life and life in abundance. And um, I think it's our goal and duty, uh, specifically in the ministry of reform, but also uh, of uh, in the body of Christ, um, to really redefine what health is. So it's it's not just looking at the, the body um, or being uh, consumed with body composition or um, our weight or our performance, uh, but it's really looking at, at, at everything. It's really looking at our lifestyle. And so a lot of times when people ask, um, what we're, how we're different than maybe more new age approach, um, I say, yeah. well, The difference is that we focus on Jesus and we all know that in order to be truly well, we need Jesus. And that was a big part going back to your original question of my journey um, to to starting reform, but also to to really uh, reclaiming my identity, reclaiming my well-being and redefining health for myself. Um, I was really sick with Lyme's disease and I was trying all the things in uh, functional health and medicine to, to heal, um, many of which were very helpful as far as uh, eating really clean diet, um, de different detox modalities, um, of course, movement and exercise, uh, managing my stress. But there was always this missing component that I couldn't um, get to the root of. And uh, I was in adoration when I realized that it was um, my craving and my thirst uh, for the Lord. And that if I really wanted to be well, I needed to invite others um, to do the same um, because we can't be well if Jesus is not in our life. And if we keep him in a box and we separate him from any aspect of our well-being, there is going to be separation. So I like to focus rather than on how we're different than maybe uh, the new age approach on um, and just put the total focus on him. Because when we invite him into the center of our lives, when we invite him into um, all things that we do, uh, and, and really I'll break it down to if you invite him into your closet and into your plate uh, and into the way that you move your body and into your relationships, they're all going to look really different. Um, yeah. And we're not going to really need too much e explanation because... Uh, with him, it's truth and it's it's clear. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a perfect oh. balance too, right? I mean, he was 
perfectly human and, and perfectly divine. So it just makes sense that that's who will bring balance to our imbalance as exactly. fallen creatures. Yeah, that that's at our cent at the center of our existence. Essentially, we're always tending to fall. But I, I love it. I, was there it was your background kind of like in medicine or how, what was that brought you to this? Uh, sure. Field? Well, I um, I was born and raised Catholic, so I, I, I have a I've always had a firm foundation and love of the Lord um, and what I thought was living uh, a fully Catholic life um, looks very different than what I had now. I was going to Sunday mass um, and uh, I think going through the, the motions of what, um, you know, one would think would be Catholic. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't really know the Lord and I didn't really know uh, who I was in him. Um, and so as I, um, developed my faith journey and my faith formation, um, different aspects and elements of my, my professional career and, um, uh, and, and personal life changed. And so I was actually a teacher for, for five years. I taught Spanish. Um, and I really, um, I really loved, uh, educating. Edu I, I think I'll be a teacher at heart, uh, forever. And I still educate today, um, every day at Reform. Um, I moved to California, um, uh, once I started to really understand that my heart was craving a greater audience, um, but it was actually thirsting for more, and I really wasn't sure what it was thirsting for. So I, um, I took a big leap of faith. Um, I left a 10-year teaching position, um, and I uh, went to San Diego um, with literally a few bags and um, nothing else. And I, I sort of started over, but knowing that I wanted to enter into the health field, um, so I worked for an incredible um, Danish uh, supplement company called Puri, um, which was also a startup at the time. And I really learned everything about uh, about business. Um, I was their first U.S. employee uh, and ended up running national sales. And so there was a lot of, as you know, with a startup, you wear lots of hats. Um, and that really, in a very real way, prepared me um, for this next chapter in um, understanding all the different elements of, of starting a business, um, but also uh, really diving into the functional health and functional medicine and um, nutrition world. So I uh, got my certification for um, nutrition and then also uh, as a certified functional medicine practitioner and um, started my own wellness practice from there. And the cool part about uh, working for a Scandinavian brand is that uh, I had uh, many trips to Copenhagen and really got to observe um, the Scandinavian culture, which um, could use a little more of God, uh, maybe in some elements, but um, their approach to simplicity uh, and their way of life um, was really uh, quite attractive to me uh, in that um, relationships, people, community, and way of life was very simple and very intentional. And so it was really interesting um, at, because it was like those years in California, I was really collecting data and the Lord was really preparing me for, um, for the next step. And so as I had my own wellness practice, um, it was there that I was understanding that people wanted to work with me for a long period of time. And that's a really, uh, really good thing, except for you should only need help to a certain uh, point and then you can, you know, learn to fly and, 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 and heal on your own. And that's really when I realized and I started to surrender more and more, invite the Lord into all the areas of my life. And I felt very clearly this invitation um, in adoration to uh, invite others to do the same. And very honestly, I did not feel equipped. I was uh, unsure that uh, I was worthy or capable of doing so. And um, truly, thanks to the saints, um, I was able to um, mirror Our Lady in giving my wholehearted yes to say, um, I'll, I'll do this for you. Um, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But if it means bringing you to other people in order to be well, I'll do it. Oh, I love that mission. Oh my goodness, that's a great story. There's so many things to unpack. Okay, first of all, um, Scandinavian culture. Um, my wife uh, and I we homeschool, and and uh, I think one of the first books that she because I was very opposed to the idea of homeschool, 
One book that my wife Diana was reading was The Happiest Kids in the World. And um, even though it's about Dutch parents helping their kids and themselves uh, by doing less, I, I think it goes along the same mm. spirit of leisure, unsupervised play, no homework, few activities. It, it reminds me of um, an actual Danish concept. I don't want to butcher it, but it, it's spelled H. Oh, I don't. I, I think it's like Hige, or I, I probably botched that, but <laughs> it's something along those lines. <laughs> um, <laughs> this word, in in particular, means um, has like something that has a quality of coziness and comfortable conviviality that engenders a feeling of contentment or well being. Um, so yeah, why not marry that with faith? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and I think that what what we notice the biggest difference between the American culture um, and the the Scandinavian culture is that um, we somehow learned that uh, here in the U.S. we have to earn uh, rest and that in order to be um, worthy of, of rest and true presence, um, we have to work really hard to, to get there. Um, and the Scandinavian culture or other cultures um, really embrace uh time leisure, down right? and leisure exactly mm-hmm. and uh i think that's what's making many of us sick is this uh the striving striving for more um rather than the simplicity and doing less um and embracing um really what's right in front of us and those who have been entrusted to us yeah i, I think the priorities are backwards here on on every front you know and and family life is definitely taking a back seat uh alongside with leisure we, we don't know how to be leisurely you know, we think that just being on our phones or watching TV or and, and it's that's something that I do really appreciate about we're me, we're both Mexican. So our culture is like very rooted. Right. So family is everything. Yeah. We are we are energized by the people around us. And and it's sad to see that the family unit, even when it's four people, that's not even a unity anymore. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. living in their own little yeah. world and. And yeah, if it's God centered, that's that's a family unit in and of itself. But when it's there's that separation, then yes, we, we find that leisure is the last thing on our mind. Everything else comes before that. And it's it's sad because it does contribute. I, I firmly believe and I agree with you that it does contribute to a lot of the issues, both mental and physical that we're experiencing today. And um, also leisure is the base so of culture, that, as we know from the book. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite books. (laughs) Um, You know, it's interesting uh, as you speak also just about community. I think that's one of the fears that many people have um, in saying yes to the Lord, because there's the fear that I'm going to lose community. I'm going to lose friends. I'm going to it's it's unpopular. It's inconvenient, Um, though. I think that if I could uh, offer one of the greatest pieces of advice and, and lessons that I've learned is that the community on the other side um, of, of all those yeses uh, is innumerable and unfathomable in the best ways. And so it's just something I think that really does hold people back or maybe keeps in a very real way their faith life hidden um, in, in fear that uh, they won't be accepted or liked uh, by those that they, they love. And um, it's a very real cross for, for many people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just had this ways. thought, Gustavo, when you say that um, we have our priorities backwards, uh, my wife, Deanna, and I go to adoration every week. And afterwards, we ask each other, how was it? How was Holy Hour? And sometimes I straight up say things like, I was falling asleep or time was moving super slow. And other times, when I sense that I've had like a good Holy Hour, I usually mm-hmm. talk about productivity. I prayed a rosary or I, I prayed hard enough or read the readings of the day or I finished a chapter, of this book, when in reality, Jesus is content with me just being there with him in the moment, mm-hmm. being there, resting in him in silence. But I can't shake this thought of I have to achieve. Mm-hmm. I have to achieve something exactly. in this holy hour. It's not striving to get done even in, in adoration. 
Mm-hmm. And if we think even as of Our Lady's Fiat, you know, she said, let it be done. And then there was surrender and, and receptivity. You know, she had a posture of receptivity to receive whatever the Lord had for her. And I think a lot of times in our culture, we approach the Lord in uh, a way that says, I'm going to control it to be done, or I'm going to earn it to be done, or I'm going to force it to be done. Um, and so many of us yearn to let it be done. It's just this the shifting over to letting go and surrender, that really yes. is the, the challenging part, um, though it's very doable and, and most especially with him. Yeah, and, and, and it goes back to trust, right? We just don't know how to trust and, and we don't know what's going to happen. And that scares us. And it's understandable, you know, but that's where prayer and, and, and working out the prayer muscle comes into play because then it stops being about you and it starts being about God and about that trust. It's like, if you just like, and, and we've heard like so many stories that, that um, rely on that trust that, that are, that's the beginning when they let go, then that's when success, wherever you want to call it success in whatever aspect of life, whether it be a successful prayer life or a successful business life, mm-hmm. when the trust happened, that's when people tell us like everything fell into place and it's totally true you know we both walter and i have talked about this that issues in our lives that that have come up it's when when you stop trying to control it when you actually uh feel like there's a solution you see the kind of light you know because then you're not carrying it by yourself and it's kind of like a cliche way of saying it that that god helps you carry it but it, it it's true you know it's nothing short but the truth that everything becomes lighter and and problems just seem to kind of like resolve themselves but they don't resolve themselves it's not magic god gives you that grace to work with him you know and it's what brings the greatest consolation is knowing that there's nowhere that we could go or anything that we can experience that he hasn't gone before us um, to experience. And so we can literally unite every suffering to the Lord and Our Lady. And that is just the greatest gift. Uh, and I, I think it's the the ability to and the courage to unite that and to to uh, let him into the, the cross um, that yeah. that he that he bore for us. Yeah. Um, I really love the the focus I mean, on body, mind, and soul that that reform has, um, and um, I mean we kind of been talking about it and how um, sometimes we can be a little bit lopsided. Like we are really good with God, and our spiritual life is uh, we are on a mountain top, mm-hmm. but but our health is pretty poor. Like I I I know that I feel better when I fast when I eat. Uh, whole foods and and when I sleep seven hours every night, but I don't have the temperance to do those things and mm-hmm. keep those habits going. Um, in your experience, what would you say is like the biggest challenge that that people have to bring this balance, especially rooted in faith? L- let me take notes. Wait, because I'm yeah. I'm currently, <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently there. <laughs> no, but it, the the truth is that. We are made from for the freedom that comes with a, a daily rhythm. So obedience, simplicity, consistency, and intentionality are really the tools um, for living a life that's formed in, in Christ. And so you're, we're all going to be formed or, or deformed by something every day. And so it's, it's making intentional choices that are consistent, which could be ordinary, which could be boring, which could be, again, uh, maybe a, a, a little uh, unpopular. Um, but this is really the formula. Um, and, and when I say formula, I say this loosely because it's always going to change. You know, if there was a formula to get to heaven, I think we'd all be following it. Uh, if there was a formula to health, um, you know, we would all be really healthy. But the, the reality is that, um, our circumstances, our lifestyle, our stressors, things are changing every day. So we have to have awareness of the current state of our body and soul so that we can intentionally make changes every day to improve those. But we want to have a lifestyle that yields to um, being alive and being fully alive. And um, that one one practice that we uh, have and that we help people do, especially um, in Reform Online, our online course, is to build this daily formation. 
so that we can be more deeply uh, formed by the Lord um, and, and do so in a way that supports our body and our soul. And so we start with um, really wholeheartedly and obediently picking a time that you're going to pray every day and protecting that for 30 minutes, regardless of any other circumstance. And ideally, that would be the, the first 30 minutes of your day before anything else happens to give first fruits to the Lord. Because as we all well know, everything is going to trickle from there. And it's in that space that we're going to be reclaiming our identity. We're going to be living in communion and, and uh, establishing right order by putting him above all, but also remembering who we are in him so that we can serve and live from that place. Um, and then, of course, to, to hand over our day um, instead of what am I going to do about all the problems today? It's what, a, what Jesus, what are you going to help me with today? Um, so we're really taking a posture of surrender and trust uh, and faith right, right right from the start. So we always ask uh, and, and recommend starting with um, prayer as the first part of your formation. And then as you uh, could imagine, um, and in many religious communities, um, they, they, they pray, they eat, and they sleep at the same time every day. And if you think about it and break it down, that means that through prayer, they're nourishing their soul. Through nutrition and their mealtimes, they're nourishing their bodies consistently. And through sleep, they're nourishing and restoring their mind, which is really where uh, we process and, and break down and restore our bodies and our, and our minds. And so we want to invite people to keep these times consistent, regardless of all the other things that happen in your life. So really pausing um, and, and sitting down for, for uh, your meals. Um, and even if that's not possible for every meal, at least one where you have a family meal together or you're coming away from your computer and you're sitting down for, for lunch um, and, and really nourishing, refueling. I mean, the purpose of, 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 um, of food is to, to nourish our, our bodies and our souls. Um, and so rather than, you know, um, falling into uh, the desires of our flesh uh, and just kind of eating what's convenient or what we're in the mood for, it's, it's having, again, intentionality and simplicity even in our meals. And then finally, it's, it's um, being really obedient to our sleep and wake times. And so having a consistency and when we're unplugging and, uh, and when we're getting to bed. And it's really amazing because this sounds so simple and as if like, well, I know all these things and I know I should be doing them. But when we put it together, it really does allow the human person to follow a daily rhythm so that there is consistency, there is simplicity, and we are constantly being reunited with the Lord throughout our day. And so when we sit for a meal, we're, we're returning back to prayer. And so there, it does then carry over to intentionality in our work, in our relationships, and it leaves space to... to combat the other areas of life um, with awareness and, um, and with energy uh, and, and with availability. And so I would say that that's a place to start is really rooting in a firm foundation and a daily rhythm each day. I love that. I've been reading about the circadian rhythm and how it can affect the health of a person. That hits, I didn't make that connection of religious orders and that, but it's especially true for them. Um, I know that I have like a, a, a love or an admiration for uh, monks and friars and uh, and that rhythm of life and the working and the praying. And my, I've been trying to tell my wife, like, we should run our home as a monastery. And it's like, no, 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 calm down. <laughs> we, we have four, chi four small children. It's like, this is not going to work. But to the extent of yes. what we could do. Um, well, and I, I believe that children crave order and structure just as well. Yeah, and sure. that to, to follow that, that example. I mean, really, reform uh, is named after the formation that the friars follow. And I work with the uh, postulants in helping their formation, um, for their 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 uh, formation and, and well being. And when I first started working with Father Innocent, who's one of the first priests that I, I journeyed with, um, it was beautiful on so many levels uh, and so fruitful. Um, and one of the biggest things that I noticed was that he was really tending to his soul every day. And it was so beautiful, but that the output of their life was so demanding. Um, and uh, the desire of, of his heart was was so beautiful that he wanted to serve, that he was getting tired um, and, and sick from, from too much output and not enough balance. And so um, there was another kind of reaffirmation that um, even religious need to tend to to their 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 bodies, especially to then 
trickle back to supporting their, their spiritual life. And, um, I started to really pay attention to the postulant schedule and month after month I would go there and I was literally watching them reform into new men by following this daily obedience in, um, in their formation. And so I called father innocent one day and I was like, can I, can I follow your formation? Like, can I do what you guys do at home? And, and he was like, of course. And that's really what, um, what allowed me to live this lifestyle that is centered on Christ because it's not just for religious formation is for everyone. And I think that um, that's a really important key takeaway from our conversation in that um, it's not just for the chosen, it's not just for religious life, it is for everyone. Um, and so is holiness and so is wholeness. And this is an invitation that we get to uh, receive and to accept. And it's, it's not that we have to live their exact hours or exact way of life, because certainly we all have our own vocations. Though I do think, Walter, that bringing it into the home and having some order and structure um, is, is, is quite um, helpful to the formation uh, and to supporting our well-being. No, I, I agree wholeheartedly with you. It's just the, the uh, how do you put it in practice? And on paper, I, I know the things that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. I think everybody knows what they should be mm -hmm. doing. It's just yeah. mm -hmm. a matter of like applying it. Um, you mentioned Father Innocent. It's a, he's a, uh, we're big fans of him, but we were doing a Born of Fire during Lent mm -hmm. this year. Um, and I have to say, we, we, I listen to the Poco Poco podcast, and it's really funny when they they talk so much trash to each other, <laughs> like, hey, Jackie is going to scold you. Because you're not sleeping uh, so that's that really funny. Um, how uh, well you kind of said that you started working with them, but um, how did you connect with the CFRs? I was volunteering uh, in 2017 at a youth. Um, uh, retreat and Father Innocent was there hearing confessions and um, one uh, well the, the kids were at lunch and nobody was was at confession and so I thought okay it's a perfect opportunity uh, to make a deposit for my soul um, so I went to confession uh, with him and then um, as I was getting up he said hey can I have your business card <laughs> and um, and and um, it was really um, it was really so beautiful because we were able to, to talk and connect um, and in a way that really he understood right from the first conversation we had together, the importance of the body and soul for everyone. And um, and so we started working one on one and he really had an incredible, uh, I'll say, reformation. Um, and the best part of Father Innocent's story is how taking care and tending uh, to his body fed his spiritual life. Um, for, and it was really like what he was feeding himself physically and how he was nourishing his body was really what resulted in how he fed um, the people that he was was serving and, and preaching to. And so it's just in, it's uh, inevitable that um, the way that you live is going to affect uh, the way that you serve. And um, this really opened up a lot of um, awareness to um, to me again in, in giving me more permission to to help priests to help religious intending to their bodies because um, there may not be enough of that and sometimes it could feel selfish um, or idolizing but there is a beautiful balance um, where even when your food is donated and even when you live in poverty um, you can um, you can prioritize your your health in a very ordered intentional way mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to mention that, like, all the food that the friars eat is donated. So how do you balance that, like, your macros and all this stuff? It's but really it, funny. It yeah, no, it is funny. I went out, Sometimes when I walk to the friary, there's a little panic of what's on the table. And Jackie's here today. You know, do we have healthy food? Um, and it's, it's, it's a little bit of a joke now. But, um, no, they really do their best. And, um, you know, we don't want it to be the focus. Uh, the focus is still to, to do the best with, with what you have there. Um, but when there are better options, to choose those options. But really, you know, we have nine uh, wellness pillars at Reform. And nutrition is just one piece of the very big puzzle. So if you can't control your nutrition, um, it's okay because there's a lot of other areas of your health that you can focus on through movement, through stress management, of course, through prayer, first and foremost. Um, so there's a lot of different elements that you can then re, um, 
reprioritize if there are things that are out of your control. And I think that's really the takeaway here, especially having families. Like sleep is not always something that parents can control. You know, sometimes stressors are out of our control. But if we refocus to the things we can control and and um, do those well and consistent, that's okay and that's good enough. And and that's where the Lord comes in to do the rest. Like that's when we that's when we live and fuel off grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I love what you said about. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher it, but basically taking care of yourself in order to like take care of others. That's what mm-hmm. I got from mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. Father Innocent story. As mm-hmm. a parent, mm-hmm. as a father, the way that I take care of myself is not for me. Is so I can live my vocation better. How I serve my wife and my children. Mm-hmm. And I think Bottom sometimes line. too we tend to get into this rut of having having more than enough excuses. You know, oh, I don't have time. Oh, the kids this. Oh, my work. And and I'm guilty of that, you know, because I always like, ah, I'll do it next week. I'll start Monday. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a famous <laughs> that's a famous mm-hmm. saying that we, I think we've all said. But um, it, it's about not focusing on so much on the excuses, I think, but mm-hmm. focusing, like you said, on the things that you can actually control. And every anything is better than nothing in, in that sense of, of making Little strides, right? Little strides will baby steps. Poco, poco, get, literally. Poco, poco, yeah. Poco, poco, <laughs> it, it gets you to yeah. your goal because the the farther you are from that goal and, and the less things you do actively to do it, and yeah, you're just going to stay in the same spot, basically. But it's it's super interesting how reform really allows you that flexibility because there's so much of the human person to, mm. to kind of like unpack, right? So how and do I you- And I think that's of, where- Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think that's where the going back to what you said about timing is there's never a convenient time to to start. Um, there's never going to be a clear 30 days for you to eat clean for the whole month um, uh, in, a, in a way that's that's convenient. So um, the my, my word of the year this year uh, is start. And I think that's that pushes us out of the perfection and into the progress, right? Of like, just start wherever you are, just start, take one intentional step in the right direction. And so even if that's one thing that you're going to do differently for your body, I'm going to go for a 30 minute walk. Uh, I'm going to drink more water today. Um, I'm going to choose not to indulge in, in uh, gluten or processed sugar for this meal. Um, that's that's good enough uh, for the next step. And then even, you know, on, uh, for the soul, I, I'm going to intentionally do a daily exam tonight. Um, I'm going to take some time to pray. Uh, I'm going to unplug and and um, and maybe read rather than scrolling mindlessly through Instagram. You know, these are just small decisions that we can we can take in the right direction. Um, but often the world promises, you know, in in uh 30 days, you can, you know, reset this or in 12 weeks, you could have this. And while yes, I do believe we can develop new habits and we can make changes for our life. um, This approach at reform is different in that we try to offer tools that you can use for a lifetime so that regardless of your circumstances, your health, um, wherever your body or soul is, you could apply what you learn to get back in, um, on the right track to to serve and and also to to heal, and going back to the original question of of how uh, and and also like when, what we ask people is, do you want to be well? Do you truly want to be well? And just pause there because if the answer is really yes, it nothing else matters. It matters that you're willing to let the Lord into your life. You're willing to really let Him see you. And you're really allowing him to journey with you the whole way. And when it's with him, it's sustainable and it's, it's easier. It's, it's, it's not, um, in a sense going to be perfect. Uh, and, and certainly there'll be lots of growth and, and, and crosses along the way, but that's where we, we grow. You know, we don't grow in comfort. We grow in, we grow in discomfort. Challenges. Yeah. My, my word for the year was organized by the way. Mm. So yeah, so we moved into a new house this past year and I've been trying to get it organized, but I think that's also a misconception, you know, that you're organizing physical things, Mm -hmm. but like, if I'm honest, I've been disorganized in other areas of my, of my life, you know, and like prayer life, I have not been super consistent, you know, there's always intentionality, but I think I can do a better job of like saying, no, this is, First this, then coffee, you know, exactly. instead, of, <laughs> yeah. instead of the other way. <laughs> Wasn't it like Father Larry Richards is no, no, 
no pre no Bible, no breakfast, <laughs> no Bible, no bed. <laughs> so good. So, so yeah. So, so let's talk about the reforms services. Um, from what I could find, it looks like there's reform online, which you talked a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a personal offering, group offering, family consulting, as well as public speaking. Um, can you expand a little bit on on these? Sure. So we uh, we invite everybody to start with Reform Online because this is really the foundational uh, course where you'll really redefine your health. You'll invite Jesus into the center of your your life, and um, you'll gain awareness on um, the areas that really need attention and intention uh, to really start making changes. And then from there, there's uh, an option to uh, continue to another course called Dig to the Roots. And this is a, um, a bit further and deeper um, in uh, the functional medicine side where we actually do a gut healing protocol. So we do a functional lab test in, uh, for the gut. Um, and then we journey with people um, to really get to the root cause of their disease. And what we also often notice is that there's a very distracting attention to symptoms where people are chasing their symptoms rather than uh, focusing on getting to the root of why they have the symptoms anyway. And I really do think that opposition keeps us there. Let's focus on um, uh, the headache. Let's have a quick cup of coffee or take an Advil um, rather than saying, why do I have a headache every day at this time? Um, or even in the cycle of sin, if we're habitually uh, in a cycle of sin, we often um, don't dig far enough to get to the root um, to stop once, once and for all. And so it's a very spiritual and, and physically uh, intentional class where we're able to give tools to get to the next level. Now that you have a formation in place, you know um, that you want to live with Christ at the center. You're doing, uh, you're living consistently uh, the pillars as well as you can. We're able to then dig deeper and get to the root cause of um, of gut health and really gut health. Um, is, is, is the root of a lot of disease. Uh, the, the gut is, I think, the first brain. Um, and a lot of people say it's the second brain, um, but, uh, but so much stems from, from gut health. Um, and then so, so from, from Dig to the Roots, um, we have memberships. We have another, uh, like our highest tier is, is called Fully Alive. And that's where we journey together um, for people who have gone through our first two courses um, and really live out the reform way of life so that we can experience the fullness of, of life. Um, and then we do retreats now, and this has been something that's so exciting. We offer retreats in person um, and, uh, of course, public speaking. And, um, and then within the classes, there is also consulting on a, on, a, on a group and individual level as well. Beautiful. That's awesome. Well, whenever you're coming to Phoenix, so <laughs> sign us up. Yeah. Uh, oh, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we need to talk about like how we make that happen. We talk about offline, but um, uh, okay. To 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 wrap it up, um, I would ask you: Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to tell people at home? Hmm. Yes, I I would like to just extend the invitation. Um, to not be self-reliant. I think that we carry so much on our shoulders. There, uh, There's always, especially in today's world where there just lacks so much um, division um, and, and a lack of peace um, to, to not get caught up in, in the world and to not try to figure it all out on your own. Um, because when your identity is in the right place and that's in God, um, you can do it with him and, and and be totally reliant on him. And the greatest part of my healing and where I really received freedom, which I think is what we are all craving, healing and freedom, yeah. um, it is when I, I really gave him permission um, to do his will in my life. And um, I know we hear that. And so we so that sounds maybe comfortable or familiar, though it is a shift, it, it's a shift in posture. Uh, and that is to say, I don't have to earn his love. I don't have to figure out his love. I just have to be. And it kind of goes back to what you said, Walter, in adoration. Like, he just wants to love us and for us to know that love and to live from that place. And that is something um, that I learned uh, specifically and especially from Father Innocent is that that is something that is our duty every day to get up and reclaim and own each day. And I think somewhere we think, well, I figured it out once, so I don't have to yeah. say it again tomorrow. It, uh, yeah. But it is so important to do because truly 
if you think about all the pillars or, or aspects of reform, how would you eat if you really owned that you're a, a son of Christ? How would you move your body if you really owned and, and really understood um, that you are a son of God? It, it will just change everything. And how would you interact with other people? Um, and, and, and how would you work if, if it was directly for him and knowing that that was your, your true purpose? And um, I think that's, that's what I would leave everyone with. No pressure, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's don't, beautiful. Don't be self-reliant. I love mm -hmm. that. It's a good reminder, too. Okay. Um, lastly, where can people find uh, you or uh, Reform Wellness? Uh, we can um, be found online at reformwellness.co, C-O. Uh, also on Instagram at reform underscore wellness. And we share lots of um, different health best practices, tips, um, spiritual reflections, uh, prayers, uh, and, and, and free offerings um, each month and, and each day on, on uh, Instagram and then also on our back end. That's Beautiful. amazing. Well. Jackie, this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, um, we hope that uh, people at home have uh, gotten something that they can use. Maybe they go to Reform Wellness and they can start the healing process and putting Christ in the center of their lives, which, you know, kind of also like the mission of the podcast is for us to lead people to where they can find uh, what they are thirsting, what they need to, mm -hmm. to nurture their, their soul, their body. So thank you so much again. Yeah. Thank you. I love what you're doing so much. It's so nice to meet both of you and to speak with you this morning. So early for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. It's we're good. good. It's good for the podcast. We sound a little bit. It's a little good. Bit deeper. It, you, you know what? I, I was thinking about this as we were prepping for the for the recording this morning that I was like, you know, when when you're going to go to the dentist, you brush really hard for all the times you haven't brushed. I'm like, I'm going to wake up really early, you know, do that practice to think that I've been doing it for the longest time. <laughs> oh, it's so good. No, it's good. He already got you started in the right direction, Gustavo. Exactly. So there's your there's your first step. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, God bless you. And, and we'll pray for you guys and for your ministry. And it's beautiful what you're doing. And it's so important to to get this message out because I think there is a, 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 a great need, you know, for for health, overall health, um, mind, body and soul. And I and I just love that. Uh, triangle that you focus on and and it's exactly what people need right now and thank you so much for having that outlet that opportunity for people mm -hmm. to experience it truly well, really, yeah all thanks to yeah. and glory to god and you know he's the divine physician and he wants us to let him do his job yeah. we just have to get out of the way <laughs> um, and, and let him in and, and to do it together exactly mm -hmm. perfect All right, and for everybody else at home, uh, go to direct.me forward slash Barbatos for more information about the podcast, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.